The dipole source is a point source which emits a dipole radiation pattern. There are two types of dipole sources available, electric and magnetic. The electric dipole is equivalent to an oscillating point charge, whereas the magnetic dipole is equivalent to a current loop. This movie shows the emission from an electric dipole source in the xy plane for a dipole oriented in the z direction. The power emitted by dipole sources in a homogeneous environment can be calculated analytically, and this analytic radiative power is used to normalize the transmission result from monitors. The actual power that is emitted by the dipole will depend on the structures in the environment surrounding the dipole and whether other sources are present. This is because any light reflected back from structures around the source or light from surrounding dipoles can constructively or destructively interfere with the light emitted by the dipole. For example, if a dipole is placed next to a metal wall, using the method of images, the metal wall can be replaced with a mirrored dipole, so the system is equivalent to injecting two dipoles which interfere coherently with each other, modifying the total radiated power. The ratio of power actually radiated by the source to the power that would be injected in a homogeneous medium is known as the Purcell factor. After running a simulation, the dipole source returns results dipole power, Purcell, spectrum, and time signal. The dipole power result gives the analytic power injected by a dipole in a homogeneous medium as a function of frequency. The Purcell result gives the Purcell factor as a function of frequency. Spectrum gives the Fourier transform of the time domain source pulse, and time signal gives the time domain amplitude of the source pulse. On an earlier slide, we mentioned that by default, the power transmission result from a monitor is normalized by the analytically calculated power that would be injected by the dipole in a homogeneous environment. You can renormalize transmission results by the actual power injected by the dipole by multiplying the transmission result by the Purcell factor. The Purcell factor can be obtained from the Purcell result from the source or by placing a box of monitors around the dipole injection region to measure the net power flowing through the box of monitors. However, if the dipole is placed within an absorbing medium, some care needs to be taken into the calculation of the Purcell factor, since the dipole power result from the source may not be accurate. A single dipole source will inject a dipole radiation pattern like shown in the image on the left. To simulate a point source which emits a uniform isotropic radiation pattern, you can run three simulations with orthogonal dipole orientations and then average the fields from the three simulations. This slide shows some applications where dipole sources are used. Dipole sources can be used to excite modes of cavities or resonators, or represent point sources such as the spontaneous emission in organic LED devices, they can also be used to represent a fluorophore to simulate fluorescence enhancement, since the decay rate of a fluorophore can be related to the power radiated by a dipole. Dipoles can also be used to excite modes of the periodic lattice for calculating the band structure of the periodic lattice structures.